it's always awesome when you're able to connect with people and it's like, I don't know, but it's something about you. Well, that's what it was for this lady, Miss Lisa Phillips. We met in church. We became friends fast. She's like an auntie to my children. I'm like an auntie to hers. And one of the things that I loved about her is how open and transparent she was. She shared so much with me and I've literally watched her grow and I've watched her overcome so much. As I got to know Lisa, I learned so much about the life that she lived and the things that she had gone through and even the things she was going through. But she never stopped believing. She never stopped giving. Now we get a chance to hear from her because an overcomer is an understatement for what she's been through. I'm Lisa Phillips. I am first and foremost um, very blessed to have four children. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've been married to my husband, to the same man, for 29 years, going on 30. And uh, I consider myself to be an encourager, I consider myself to be an overcomer, and I consider myself to be a child of God. So I, I grew up in North Carolina. My dad was in the Army, and I had the good fortune of moving around some when we were earlier in life. and always considered North Carolina home because my dad's parents were here, my mom's family was here, and this was where it was always roots. And I knew that when I came to a point that I could settle down, I wanted to be here in North Carolina. And, you know, things were not always happy. It sounds like a happy story. Um, one of the things that I think was interesting growing up is that there was a lot to overcome because we were, we did move quite a bit and it was sometimes hard to put down roots. But when we were here and we lived um, in North Carolina and we were around the family. One of the things that was very difficult to overcome was that there was always a secret. There was something that was being hidden in the background and that was living with um, a parent that was having a very difficult time at managing life. And my mom, a very dear woman, uh, struggled most of her life and, and frankly still does with a lot of illness, including mental illness. And while she was not a bad mom, she was a sick mom. She did the best that she could with what she had. And it left us children, and especially me as the oldest, with um, feeling a sense of responsibility to care for and protect, uh, particularly my younger sister. So when those things happened, those things could be episodes of we never really knew when she would be okay, if she would be set off by something. And it could be the simplest things that could be Putting the ham in the wrong place in the refrigerator could really warrant a very severe and extreme punishment um, that sometimes would be physical, often, quite honestly, most of the time physical, definitely verbal, and definitely emotional um, abuse. And it left us with feeling constantly that we had to maintain a state of perfection and walking on eggshells because we weren't really clear on what, um, what might be the day that she may be upset and there may be very severe and extreme punishment again that we would have to endure. I felt personally responsible to care for my siblings to make sure that they would, um, they would not have the wrath that would be you know, kind of doled out upon us often. So I found myself protecting them and I found myself often, you know, if someone broke something by mistake, as children will, I found myself as the oldest taking responsibility for that and saying, even if it wasn't true, that I had done it, that I had broken the terrarium or I had broken the glass or spilled the milk. I was very afraid to make a mistake. I was afraid that if I did, there would be a very high cost to pay for it, typically. I think it also left me feeling ashamed believing that somehow or other it was my fault and that there was a ton of guilt that if there ever was a punishment that was doled out or there was something that was done that was not quite as it should be with children not keeping their room clean or any of those things that you, you deal with on a daily basis that it made me feel that I was less than and certainly that it was my fault and that somehow I should have been better, I should have been smarter, I should have been uh, better prepared, I should have tried harder it left me feeling like I could never really quite meet that objective. I think we're always overcoming. I don't think that anybody's ever reached a point of saying we're completely done. I think that it's all those myriad of experiences that make us who we are. And for me, overcoming as an adult, I'm sorry, as a child particularly, it was 
really just thinking about the fact that if I was going to endure this, that it had to be for the help of someone else. And in the case for me, um, definitely a family person, care for my siblings greatly and deeply. Um, it was for me the opportunity for me to say, if this is going to happen, it's, at least it's going to be for the protection of my sister or my brother, that it wouldn't um, it wouldn't come upon them. So for me, it was looking forward to saying, if this is what I'm going to endure for the moment, it's going to be for better good. It's going to be for someone else to be okay. What that did to me as I carried it through and in my life, frankly, was often feeling a sense of responsibility for things that weren't really mine to carry. It wasn't really my job to make things okay and to make things right for my parents. You know, it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting question, and it's one that I've contemplated a lot, and I've shared this with my children, and and frankly, many women that I've worked with over the the last several years. I remember it very well. I was in second grade, and I was attending a Chris. I'm sorry, it was actually an Easter play um, at a church, a local church. We didn't go to church at that point, but I knew that there was something there that I wanted. I had a grandmother that lived. Um, out of state, but every time I'd visit her, she'd bring me with her to church, and I knew that there was something there that I wanted. I longed for that. So on Easter, we had attended the church, and during the play, they were doing a scene where they were basically showing that if you can't give your life to Christ, that the alternative, once we leave this world, is really going to, um, you know, an eternal an eternal hell and, and burning, and I didn't want that. So there was, of course, an altar call, and at that moment, I felt such a heavy call in my life. I felt such a call, and, and being just in second grade, knowing I want that. I, I want that now. But I couldn't leave my mom, so I stayed in the aisle. And I thought, I don't want to leave her here because I don't think she means for this to be her life. But if I leave her, who will help her? So as time went on, and I began to really say, you know, I really do want the Lord. I was able to, in fifth grade, again, attending another church event, um, I was actually able at that point, there was no one around, there was no family. I was there by myself, and I was actually able to... Um, to when they did the altar call and I remember I remember it very well we were around a campfire and they asked who would like to commit their life to the Lord and I remember my hand shot up like a bullet and I went forward and that is the time that I actually accepted the Lord as my Savior and at the point that I in fifth grade you know found this sense of strength and a sense of purpose that was beyond myself um, I learned how to pray and I learned how to journal and what that taught me was that I had an opportunity to communicate and I had an opportunity to really express those feelings and those things that weren't always okay for me to express at home or it wasn't really safe for me to kind of share where I was feeling or where I was thinking my life should go um, and really beginning to understand that my thoughts could be opened up beyond what my current situation was. So in other words, I didn't have to stay where I was. I could move beyond that and go to what my future could look like and how I could actually help someone else. So for me, what that meant in terms of overcoming when that started was seeing kids at school that I knew, you know, I could just feel that things might not be um, as, as things might appear on the outside that everything was happy. I just had this sense of knowing that perhaps it wasn't and I would befriend them. They would become my friends. And I had this desire to uh, help, help anyone that felt like either they didn't belong or that they were less than to realize that they they really weren't less than and there really was an opportunity for them to be more than what they were living at the moment. I think that forgiveness as much as we hear it and it sounds very cliche is really not about the other person and coming to terms with the fact that forgiving allows you to be able to move on and heal and, and I think of it often like it's it, it has a hook in you whatever the thing is whatever the person is whatever the the offense was, whatever it may be, it has a hook in you and it can continue to pull you back. And as I realized that I wanted to propel forward, that I wanted to go forward in my life, I had to remove the hook. And the only vehicle and means to do that was forgiveness for me. And what I had to really understand, especially as a child and coming into young adulthood and becoming, you know, becoming a wife and becoming who God had ultimately intended for me to be, I had to recognize that sometimes forgiveness doesn't mean that the thing didn't happen. It did happen, you acknowledge it. 
It doesn't mean that you're dishonoring a parent or someone that you care about by acknowledging that it happened and forgiving them anyway. And forgiveness is a gift that we've all been given. And oftentimes we have to recognize that the gift is for yourself. When you are forgiving the other person uh, or whatever it may be in your life that you're forgiving and overcoming, it truly is about your strength and your healing and your ability to move on and live your life. I've been, I've been very fortunate, I've been very blessed and that I've had a, a really, a very successful career and um, been again, very blessed and very fortunate that I started out in high tech um, right out of school and started out selling something that you know people thought was really crazy at the time we were selling personal computers because it was never going to be you know distributed to your desktop and at the time that that was happening there were no women doing what I was doing so I took on uh, I took on a role in sales and started selling computer hardware, driving um, driving my territory, selling, and often there were definitely no women doing what I was doing. And frankly, there were a lot of people that felt that, um, why are you here? Why are you taking the job that really should be given to someone else, often a man? And I would be called in for meetings, uh, not necessarily because people were interested in what I had to say as much as they were interested in seeing what I looked like and seeing um, can she be smart because she really can't show up here and have anything of substance to share with us and how is she going to tell us how to run our business and how these things called computers are going to help us to be more effective and more efficient in what we're doing. So that was an immediate shock for me. I really was not prepared for the fact that anyone would have considered me less than in terms of not having enough intelligence or not having enough knowledge to be able to help them. But what it actually did, and being prepared, what I grew up with, preparing me for what I was going to face was, I had done this before. I had been there before. There were times that I had to overcome and I was underestimated and I needed to make it right. So that ability to make it right and trying to make it easier for everybody around me transferred well to a very important skill for me to be able to listen to my customer and be able to understand what problems they were trying to address and come up with a solution quickly. So even though during the time that I was growing up, those adversities seemed very difficult, it actually created in me a skill of being able to understand quickly how to come up with a solution to fix a problem. My children and I have talked many times, um, you know, with balance and with love about that their, their growing up environment is very different than, than my own. And the unfortunate reality is that I don't think any of us ever escape challenges in life. Uh, it's not if you're going to go through something, it's just when. And the truth is that what you have to learn as a skill is being able to recognize that this is not forever. Whatever the thing is, the moment, the the challenge, the hurt, the, the difficulty. It, it can do one of two things. It can make you bitter or it can make you better. And you have to decide which path you'll take with that. And the encouragement that I've given to my children is we have to let this propel us forward. It has to make you better. And I've unfortunately had, well, fortunately, because I have four great children, I've had, um, I've had to walk with my kids in love and walk them through difficulties as well and this did help them these were skills that were important to them to understand and they did walk through recognizing that there would be better coming that what they were dealing with at the moment wasn't going to define them and that they could walk through to a better day i am lisa phillips I am successful, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a woman of God. I've been through challenges, I've had insecurities, I've been discriminated against, and I've had to stand alone. I've had failures, I've been hurt, but I've also been empowered. And most of all, because I am a child of God, I am an overcomer. How many of you can relate to that? How many of you can, can relate to being just a little girl and being so afraid to do anything because you don't know what the response could be? something that you grow up with, end up having a whole family of your own. But you're able to now love that family and teach them and not bring forth all of those hurts and insecurities, but actually step upon them and grow and, and just go forth and living your best life now. Lisa Phillips, an incredible story and an incredible way for her to take what she's been through, step upon it, 
keeping it beneath her and walking out the life that she desired to live all along. Grateful, so grateful to hear from Lisa and her story of being an overcomer.